Welcome to this short revision lecture on performance management, a topic in the advanced performance management syllabus. Now the syllabus, it, made part of the title, is essentially performance management. And we have to understand what's meant by performance. And then we have to uh, try to find out ways in which we can encourage people, encourage the organization uh, to operate, to move in such a way uh, that we achieve that desired performance. First of all, performance. And in a profit-seeking organization, performance is ultimately measured by the financial results, uh, often as displayed in the financial statements. So measures such as profit, sales, gross profit percentage, costs, earnings per share, perhaps dividends, share price, these are all indicators of how well the company is getting on. These are indicators to investors. However, none of these indicators can stand alone. Just because we aim for sales of 10 million doesn't mean we're going to get to sales of 10 million. Or because we want a gross profit percentage of 20% doesn't mean we're going to get there. All of these financial results are the consequence of the company operating properly in certain areas. So, for example, good financial performance will depend on good performance elsewhere, such as quality. If you have poor quality, it is unlikely you're going to get good financial performance it's unlikely to be able to sell at a good selling price and therefore that you'll be able to get a good gross profit percentage. Quality can, can drive the financial performance. Similarly, efficiency. Poor efficiency tends to mean high costs. Turnaround times. Turnaround times, if they're short, they will probably make you popular uh, with your customers. And if you're popular with your customers, you're probably going to get more sales. And if you're popular with your customers, you might be able to edge up your selling price a little bit. Flexibility. Uh, to be able to efficiently change around the production line in a cost-efficient way, keeping your cost down, being able to fit in extra orders when they come along very quickly, winning those orders, making the sales, making the profits, is very important. Innovation. Nothing stands still. You might be doing splendidly at the moment, but in a couple of years' time, some competitor leapfrogs you, produces better products, better quality, and better technical specifications, uh, and your profits will begin to fall. Many of these other areas are captured by models such as the performance pyramid, which you'll see in the notes. Or here I've set out Kaplan and Norton's uh, balance scorecard. It says that the uh, financial performance lies at the top of the end of the pyramid, so to speak. And that depends on keeping your customers happy. It depends on uh, internal business efficiency, making things quickly, uh, making things reliably, making things at a relatively low cost and so on. If you can't do that, you won't have happy customers. If you don't have happy customers, you won't have sales and a good profit. And again, I'd say the whole edifice rests on constant innovation and learning. In a question, the desired performance areas can be communicated in two ways. First of all, it may be not quite hidden, but kind of tucked away in a mission statement or the maybe it's called the aims uh, of the organization. So the company's mission is to provide high quality innovative goods. Gives us some clue as to what's important. Or the company's mission is to provide low cost reliable goods at high volume. That's how the management of the company sees its future, sees success. Some questions, the performance will be given to you more explicitly. For example, the directors want to increase the number of customers by 20%. So we have to give attention to that. 
we have to give attention to how we might manage it by, by measuring it first, uh, setting a target. Or it might be directors who want to reduce turnaround times by 10%. Uh, again, this says what performance is, and therefore we have to direct our management effort there. And ultimately, this is going to be my measuring something. All of these uh, kind of uh, describing words, adjectives, if you like, high quality, innovation, low cost, reliability, high volume, number of customers, turnaround time. These have been told to you, uh, 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 notify you, notify that these are important to the company and its management. And this is what we therefore have to concentrate on. You may be asked to invent measures uh, for these qualities, or you may be presented with something that management is doing already uh, in, for, for its management reports, and you may be asked to evaluate that. In other words, to say whether you think management is actually managing the right thing, measuring and managing the right thing, or, or whether it's missing stuff slightly. Uh, and their management reports have to be revamped so that they report areas of importance. So if we think of some of these areas, we, 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 uh, how are we going to measure them? If you don't measure something, uh, you can't set targets, you can't uh, uh, decide how people are getting on, you can't decide uh, whether there's a shortfall in that performance. Uh, and setting targets implies setting some sort of measures, uh, though I, I accept in some cases that can be very difficult. If we had listed here, we don't, but if we'd listed here uh, something like uh, customer satisfaction, that uh, can be maybe relatively difficult to measure. You, you can do it, of course, you can do surveys and so on, but if you're saying customer satisfaction is important, it makes no sense. If that's an element of good performance, it makes no sense not to measure it. So high quality, relatively easy. We could measure quality by rejects, faults found, breakdowns, uh, and all of these problems could be divided between internal and external. Uh, do we uh, reject a product partway through the manufacturing process, in other words internally, or is it rejected when it gets to the customer a much more serious situation regarding quality uh, because it costs uh, a lot of money, a lot of goodwill uh, with the customer. Innovation. We could measure new products launched. We could look at the number of patents filed. We could look at the amount of money spent in research and development. Uh, we could look at how many product updates we've made this year. We'd be setting targets by and large and then comparing actual performance to the targets. Low cost, pretty easy. Cost per unit, uh, maybe cost compared to last year, cost compared to budget, cost compared to competitors. We have to get some idea whether the cost per unit is good enough. Uh, and when we come to, to, to kind of looking at standard setting uh, and benchmarks and so on, uh, when you're setting these performance measures, it, it, it can be quite dangerous simply to look internally at what you think is good if externally your competitors are doing far better. So we have to also be able to justify these targets. High volume, easy. Uh, units compared to last year, compared to budget, compared to competitors. Reliability, a bit like quality, but breakdowns, number of breakdowns, number of warranty claims by customers, number of sales returns because of things broken down within six months or something, uh, customer feedback, uh, maybe on a website uh, saying, don't buy this, you know, one star on the Amazon review uh, because it keeps breaking down. We can measure all that. Number of customers up by 20%. Relatively easy. You could simply look at your uh, receivables ledger and see maybe how many accounts you have there. Uh, but we have to make sure that these customers are worthwhile, that they're actually buying decent volumes, that they haven't kind of bought one unit and then, then disappeared uh, uh, from, 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 from our orders, if you like. 
uh, uh, we have to make sure, maybe by setting certain criteria, that okay, any any fool, if you like, can increase the number of customers, but are they actually buying much from us? And similarly, at turnaround time down by 10%, we can obviously measure, let's say, goods are being sent back to us for fixing or goods have been ordered from us. Uh, if uh, the goods ordered are easily available on the shelf, we can probably dispatch them very quickly. If the goods, however, have to be specially made, especially adapted in some way, then that is more difficult. And you could see how uh, someone could potentially manipulate uh, some of these measures so that they achieve all of the easy uh, stuff uh, uh, and therefore get a very fast turnaround time, uh, but they ignore all the difficult stuff, which may be the bigger orders. In our in the UK's National Health Service, uh, you know, we, we, we look at um, queues of patients waiting treatment. Uh, and, you know, this is not being quite fair, but it's uh, easy to get the queues of patients awaiting treatment down if you fix everyone uh, who has, say, got an ingrown toenail, so that's, you know, an hour's worth of surgery or something, uh, but you ignore everyone who needs a kidney transplant. Uh, and if you just look at the volumes, then of course the waiting lists decrease because you're essentially getting rid of the relatively minor easy cases, uh, but you're leaving an awful lot of people uh, in a very dangerous situation. So we're, up, we're open also to an element of manipulation in, in all of these measures. Uh, and, and certainly it will usually mean you have to have a number of measures to properly uh, corral to push performance in the right direction. There is no point in simply having sales volume if you don't also look at gross profit percentage because again any fool can increase sales volume by having the selling price. You can end up with uh, an awful lot of uh, performance measures. Uh, it's important to uh, prioritize those and the KPIs, the key performance indicators, should come at the top of the list. These are the elements of performance, often related to critical success factors, the key areas of the business where we really must perform well uh, if we are to survive. In not-for-profit organisations, uh, performance uh, management and measurement is still important. Uh, we haven't really got the financial results to the same extent. If you're looking at a hospital, a school, uh, something of that sort, uh, the, we're not looking at profits, we're not looking at share prices in general, uh, but they are all going to be constrained by a budget. And we have to make sure that value for money is obtained, that the costs are wisely invested and spent. Uh, so in a, a hospital, for example, you might look at the number of people treated, the number of certain number of operations. You could look at survival rates and, and, and so on. And you could compare this to the cost. You could compare it to the number of doctors, the number of nurses. You get some idea of the efficiencies. But of course, it's terribly difficult because uh, whereas in a, a company, uh, people might be selling you know, five different products in a hospital, there are kind of hundreds of different outcomes, uh, different uh, health problems, if you like, which have to be addressed, and it gets much more difficult. In a school, we have to think, what is the, the proper performance of a school? What is a school for? Is it for just getting people through exams? Is it the number of people who leave being able to read and write and do simple arithmetic correctly? Uh, is it to do with improving behaviour? Is it to do with improving sporting skills? Uh, and before we decide, if you like, on what's meant by performance, we need to kind of decide on what are the purpose of these uh, institutions are. It's not as simple as profit-seeking organisations where 
Prophet is a great banner that everyone can rally to. Other ones, for example, the charity relieving hunger. Uh, I, I would su suggest maybe it's the number of people to whom we manage to give food or the number of people that we reckon whose lives have been saved. Uh, and we can, again, we'd have to have some measure maybe of efficiency uh, in, in terms of how well we distribute the resources and, and accurately we distribute the resources to the people who need them. In defence, a, a difficult one, I mean, many governments spend huge amounts of money in defence, but we have to identify what is the purpose of defence. Is it to simply defend your own country at home or are we willing to send troops abroad to try and quell uh, some unrest which might at some point uh, uh, be a threat to us? Uh, 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 are we going to use air power, sea power, armies? Um, uh, how are we going to measure the effectiveness of defence? How, how, how do you capture the number of threats which have been lowered? Uh, for you know, per, per, per million dollars or whatever invested in the armed forces. A state broadcaster, something like the BBC. How do we measure the performance of the state broadcaster? Is it just the average number of TV, TV viewers? Uh, but if the state broadcaster is, is collecting money from the state, uh, should it be simply making programs which are popular or has it uh, has some responsibilities to educate? And how are we going to measure its performance? When you get to not-for-profit organizations, the three E's can be important. Effectiveness, essentially, what is the organization for? What should it be achieving? So should a hospital simply be making people better? Should it also be relieving pain? Should it be doing research? Should it be helping in creating vaccines? Uh, unless you know what its kind of purpose is, we don't know what to measure. Then we can think of efficiency, which is input versus output. Uh, how many dollars does it take to, uh, let's say, remove an appendicitis? Uh, we want to do that efficiency, efficiently. And finally then, the economy. Once you've decided what we're going to do, what sort of operations we're going to do, uh, or, or um, uh, what sort of programs we're going to produce if we're a state broadcaster, do it economically. Uh, uh, choose a cost-effective way uh, of achieving what you should be achieving. Performance measurement problems. Once you set targets, uh, once you set budgets, uh, then, uh, you know, people will, will, will obviously focus on these, uh, but there are, there are uncertain problems. First of all, tunnel vision, uh, that you concentrate on some measures of performance, maybe because they're easy to achieve, to the detriment of others. You achieve what's easy and all the rest goes to waste. Sub-optimization, you hit your budget for sales, for example, why would you try any more? Myopia, focusing on the short term, not the long term. Uh, uh, refusing to replace goods for a customer, uh, even though that will cost us a little bit short term, but long term that customer will never come back to us. Measurement fixation, measures that are not important. Far too many measures. It kind of leads maybe a bit to tunnel vision. It opens up the, the possibility of tunnel vision, um, where, where people have just found it too hard to concentrate on what's important. Misrepresentation, basically uh, fiddling the results. So, uh, so if you go over expenses in one area, you're up against your budget, well, reallocate them somewhere else. And you can understand maybe why it's done, but you, it's not justifiable. It gives management the wrong information, that, but because maybe of pressures on people, uh, they feel that uh, you know, achieving this target is what they have to do. And gaming, uh, behavior designed to achieve some sort of strategic advantage. 
uh, that uh, you know, a, a call comes in for a colleague, you don't pass it on. Uh, that colleague will therefore not perform as well and you look better uh, as a result of that. It could be a deferring sales from this year to next year. You know you've got your budget this year, you know it might be hard next year, so let's book that sale into the next financial period rather than taking it now. And finally, ossification. Ossification means turn to bone. Really where the measures that we have invented and set up never change. They are static, they don't keep up to date and we are measuring stuff that is of little relevance to us now and we don't bring on board new measures which are very important for the future of the organisation. Performance management leads to performance measurement or performance leads to performance management, performance management leads to performance measurement and we have to encourage staff to achieve the desired performance. And broadly this is done in two ways, uh, motivation and rewards. Motivate people, fire them up, make them enthusiastic, maybe by good leadership, that you lead them uh, through almost force of personality and their love and regard for you to perform well. Or it can be more explicit rewards, uh, like paying people more, like giving them a good review, uh, like uh, recognition, like giving them promotion. All of these can move people, encourage people to move in the right direction. Fitzgerald and Moon uh, have certain building blocks, uh, but there's something to say about the uh, targets, if you like, uh, that we're going to be potentially setting people and measuring uh, uh, and comparing people against. First of all, we have to decide uh, what dimensions of performance should be measured. And we've been talking about that. Should we measure quality, turnaround time, uh, uh, number of new customers, customer satisfaction, uh, uh, number of people you manage to send on training courses, number of new products. We have to decide what we're going to measure. And then when we give people their targets, uh, we have to give them targets which they own, which really means something which they can influence. There's no point in giving people a target if, no matter how hard they try, however much they try to be innovative in achieving that target, it's kind of outside their scope of responsibility or outside their path it will become immensely frustrating to people if you set them targets over which they have no influence whatsoever, no way of increasing their chance of achieving that. And finally, uh, if we're giving rewards, whether it's money, praise, recognition, promotion, uh, these should be clear. Uh, it should be clear to people, we should stick to them, we should say, if you achieve you above the target sales, then you will get a 10% bonus. That's clear. Uh, and uh, as I've said before, uh, th these managers should be able to influence you. They should own this target. It should be ideally theirs, but sometimes you have to share it with a team of people. But we as a team feel we can influence this, own it, uh, and we are kind of masters of our own destiny uh, otherwise, we're setting targets that people will simply give up on. They will say, no matter how hard I try, I have no hope of getting this, I may as well give up.